The conservative MP for Kenora says he wasn't really surprised by his party's caucus vote, which saw Aaron O'Toole go from current to former leader of the party. O'Toole required at least 51% support to survive. Instead, 73 of the 119 Conservative MPs voted in favours of ousting him. Many have cited O'Toole's lacklustre performance in the last year's election and flip-flopping on key party issues. Eric Melillo supported O'Toole when he campaigned for the leadership in 2020, following the ouster, the, the ouster of Andrew Scheer. He says despite less than 1% of the overall party making the final decision, he believes and respects that the Reform Act was followed properly. Melillo also doesn't believe this week's events have created a rift within the party, noting the hardest part is now over. It's on uh, you know, what our path forward is. Uh, I think that's, uh, you know, that, that debate and that discussion is healthy. Um, I, I think uh, that's what we need in a, in a democracy, but I'm, uh, I'm confident we'll, uh, we'll come together uh, you know, united under uh, Candace Bergen uh, as the interim leader. And, and of course, we'll, we'll rally around uh, whoever is going to be elected leader uh, later on. Melillo is uncertain as to when a new leader will be chosen and says he hasn't been approached by anyone looking for his support yet. The lives of both children and seniors in the Kenora area are about to improve significantly, following several announcements from Kenora Rainy River MPP Greg Rickford this week. With a new park to be built on an area First Nation and access at another in the city to be improved as well a community paramedicine program which aims to bring stress off the hospital and long-term care homes in the area. Adam Riley has more. It may just be an empty field now on the Wishishkanigam First Nation, but very soon it will become a hub of community activity. Following an announcement by Kenora Rainy River MPP Greg Rickford of $395,000 through the Ontario Trillium Fund, Chief Chris Skeed says since being re-elected as chief, he believes he must do everything he can for his community and calls this an investment for the children. At the end of the day, I think uh, each kid should have a very happy childhood and I know this uh, uh, construction here in, in behind me here is the area that we're looking at actually uh, have a lot of good plans for working with our education department, uh, specifically the Jordan's principal. In addition to a playground, the project will also include a skate park and basketball court located beside the community centre. Meanwhile, in Kenora, at the Norman Park, Rickford announced another $269,000 to revamp the park and make it fully accessible. Mayor Dan Raynard says the city has eyed a project like this for some time and is excited to see it come together as he believes it will break new ground in the region. The project will start once the snow starts melting, which hopefully will be earlier because we've all had enough of minus 40. And uh, it will be in place. So as far as we know, it's definitely going to be the first fully accessible park in, in Kenora, for sure. We believe in northwestern Ontario. Raynard expects the project to be complete for 2023. On Tuesday, Rickford also announced an expansion of the community paramedicine program in Kenora, similar to an announcement he made in Fort Francis last year. He says it will offer many different services handled by paramedics to improve life for older residents. It services the Indigenous communities local to us as well, helping to keep seniors and elders in their homes as long as they want to, and of course reducing the transition, the premature transition into alternative levels of care facilities and or the hospital. So we believe this is the new frontier of delivering health. Rickford continued his tour of the region with stops in Mation to announce improvements for the Woodland Arena and infrastructure announcements to the Dryden Fire Services Hall No. 2, worth ninety dollars and $91,000 respectively through the Northern Ontario Heritage Fund Corporation, of which Rickford is the chair of. Adam Riley, TBT News. A new kindergarten to grade 12 school in Rainy River could mean the old high school is being repurposed as a municipal office, leading to a number of benefits for locals. Rainy River Mayor Deb Ewald says council still needs to approve the move of the town office. Relocating it to the current high school would see more space for activities for a number of local groups. A designated council chamber could be created and the town's fix-it shop used by a large number of seniors would be moved to a more central location. It also opens up room in the current town office. Um, and the seniors are both in the uh, old train station. So, and we've done a lot of work to restore that. So it, that would be perfect as a tourist information bureau and um, a railway museum and maybe possibly a birding museum. That's something else. 
Construction on the new school will begin in the spring with completion slated for the fall of 2023, meaning Rainy River Council has some time to decide on moving the town office. Elections Canada has apologized for its actions that's left voters in three remote First Nations in the Kenora riding unable to cast their ballots during last year's snap federal election. In its report presented in the House of Commons this week's Election Canada says Cat Lake, Poplar Hill and Pekanjikem First Nations did not have polling stations on election days as initially communicated to the communities. The leaders of those First Nations informed the agency that many residents would be away participating in traditional hunting activities and voting services were moved up a week into advance poll to account for the hunt. But the change came too late in the election period and the new voting cards reflecting the date change could not be issued in those communities, which resulted in some voters not knowing about the date change and therefore being unable to vote. Elections Canada says better communication efforts must be made for future elections and it will be reviewing how the agency engages and services Indigenous electors. A more depth report on the events in the Kenora riding will be released at a later date. Coming up after the break, a resident of Dryden returns home with hopes of innovation of the community's agricultural past. Thank you.